Websites such as 4chan are often not the most family-friendly of places. Filled with boards where posters can share their most depraved of opinions to the world in an anonymous fashion. Most would say it's hardly a place for a teenage girl to be found, but that was the case with Oxychan. Today we'll cover her tragically short life. Today's story begins in upstate New York in the small town of Utica. Born on October 2nd, 2001, Bianca Devins was a seemingly average teenager who attended high school and partook in other average activities akin to someone else her age. What most people in her real life didn't know, however, was that Bianca spent a considerable amount of time online sometimes in rather dark corners of the internet. One of the sites Bianca frequently visited was 4chan, which is no stranger to internet controversy. The appeal to the site is just how anonymous it is. There is no account signup necessary for using 4chan, no matter if you're simply lurking or actively making posts. Our story today will focus on 4chan's R9K board, or otherwise known as Robot 9001. This board has developed a certain culture that gravitates to discussions and subjects of social rejection and loneliness. If you go on it right now, you will probably see many people talking about bad relationships, asking for advice on how to meet guys or girls, and talking about their general feelings feelings of disenfranchisement towards society as a whole. While the site is anonymous, some people choose to identify themselves to become mainstays in the R9K community, one of these people being Bianca Devins. Bianca posted pictures of herself on 4chan, apparently attempting to meet others, for the purpose of starting a relationship or even having intimate interactions. Multiple help threads had been posted on R9K and other boards with users citing that they wanted to help Bianca. Reading through the post, they list a number of things about her, and it's obvious that to many, she was known as an overtly promiscuous young girl, who was engaging in reckless behavior on a frequent basis. The post then goes on to talk about the troubled life of this 16-year-old girl who they claimed was abused as a child, hooked up with guys that often recorded her, abused drugs from across the spectrum, suffered from a myriad of mental problems, and in 4chan fashion ended the post by pointing out that she had a long neck. Around this time, people began calling her Oxychan. While it's unclear to this day how much of this information, if any, is correct, what is certain is that at this point, people wanted her to get help because she was acting irresponsibly and was going to get hurt if she didn't stop. They would soon learn that their attempts, though, were in vain. On July 15th, 2019, disturbing photos were posted on Discord from the account of Brandon Andrew Clark, a 21-year-old from New York. Users soon realized that the pictures were of Bianca. He posted the same ones to his public Instagram account as well, with some rather disturbing captions, a few of which being, Here Comes Hell and I'm Sorry Bianca. These photos were reported to the authorities shortly after as it was clear to all of the users seeing these that something was horribly wrong. According to the local paper, police were dispatched to Post Street at approximately 7.20 a.m. for a welfare check. The first officer arrived, found a black SUV with Clark lying on the ground next to it in a wooded area at the end of the street. As the officer approached, Clark almost immediately began to stab himself in the neck with a folding knife, police said. He then laid down on a green tarp on the ground some distance away. The officer noted what appeared to be Bianca's hair sticking out from underneath another tarp, which is where Clark stated she would be found. After a short struggle, they detained Brandon and had him taken away to the hospital for immediate surgery. Local media managed to get a police statement shortly after the incident occurred as well. Looking at clips from the news at the time, it's clear that people saw this as nothing more than a story about the reason why women are scared of men online. They referred to her as a micro-influencer, without much in terms of context to her time on 4chan. Instead, they spread the angle that she was killed by a stalker of some sorts. Many also made tweets about the situation such as, Stories like hashtag Rip Bianca are the reason why women fear men on a daily basis. This guy stalked her, was obsessed with her, and then killed her for denying his advances, and then posted all of this on his Instagram. So when you say, well, why don't you just say no, this is why. Even though the narrative that this is a story of why women should fear men continued to be spread across social media, as people continued to dig, they found even more unsettling information that would crack the case wide open. 
We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. If you're in need of new earbuds, a pair of Raycons might just be the right choice for you. The company was co-founded by Ray J, and Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns. They're super comfortable and come with a variety of fit options. Unlike some other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet, with no dangling wires or stems. They're great for video chats. And the compact carrying case can charge the earbuds four times on a single charge. Celebrities like Snoop Dogg, J.R. Smith, and Mike Tyson are obsessed with their Raycons and the sound quality of them. I personally love my everyday E25 earbuds as they have 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. It also comes in a bunch of new fun colors. So if you're interested in trying them out for yourself, I suggest you click the link in the description down below to get 15% off your first order. Again, go to buyraycon.com slash mysteries to try out a pair for yourself. While widespread media coverage about Bianca continued, discussions of her online activities and the circumstances surrounding her death soon began on websites like Kiwi Farms and 4chan, where many users shocked by what happened wanted to piece together the story and figure out exactly what led to such a morbid tragedy. Many speculated that Bianca could have been killed by an old boyfriend of hers or someone who she spoke to online and had become romantically interested with. Others thought it was possible she had become involved in some sort of risque sexual encounter that went wrong, and then the killer decided to dump her body before being caught by the police. However, due to some leaks made from a few of her mutuals on Discord, Twitter, Instagram, and 4chan, as well as the testimony of those who were in the same communities as her, particularly R9K, many were able to piece together the puzzle as to what had occurred. This is when many discovered the fact that on 4chan she went by OxyChan. Robots on R9K are saying she's been prostituting since she was 15. It is claimed she would give news of herself to boys and demand money slash oxy, or she would report them to the feds. Screenshots posted also painted an image of a very mentally disturbed person, who much like the robots had said earlier, was in need of some help. Here we see her revealing to her boyfriend that she did not care about him and had been cheating on him with a number of people. The screenshots of supposed messages Bianca was having painted a tale similar to the one shown on 4chan earlier a young woman who was engaging in progressively more dangerous activities, sexual encounters with men who didn't have her safety in mind, mental issues that she had no one to help her with, and overall just a self-destructive attitude. If these screenshots are to be taken as fact, then Bianca would have been someone who had accumulated a number of male orbiters, who she spoke to when needed, and whom she used for gratification. All of this put together paint an image of someone who used the online world as a way to receive attention and validation. With that in mind, let's move on to the young man who would take her life. Brandon Andrew Clark. Many speculated that Brandon was some past or current lover of Bianca, and chalked it up to a crime of passion due to the posts that he made on Instagram. He seemed to feel sorry for what he had done while also wanting revenge because of some perceived pain that had been caused because of Bianca. However, it was unclear if the two had met prior to the incident in person, or had ever spoken online. Bianca's sister would also make a post on Instagram explaining their relationship, which read, This is her sister. It wasn't just an internet boyfriend. This was a close family friend whom we've met and trusted so much. I do not want false information being spread around. Although many of these accounts are somewhat unverifiable, a friend of Bianca came out to say something of the same effect, strengthening the case that Brandon and Bianca were rather close. I am saddened by the amount of misinformation being spread about Bianca as someone who was a friend of hers, and in the server where it happened. I can tell you these things are a fact. 1. Bianca's head was not cut off. 2. Nothing was posted to Instagram Live but to Discord. 3. The killer wasn't a stalker or ex-boyfriend, nor was he some incel that she knew online. She was friends with him in real life, and even met her mother. 4. The guy posted about local murder-suicides in Bianca's area, leading me to believe this was premeditated. So it looked like the online narrative that an Instagram influencer was murdered by an internet stalker were not as true as many first thought. 
the truth about OxyChance passing was becoming more clear. From screenshots and testimony posted online, it becomes obvious that Bianca and Brandon weren't exactly together. Rather, they had met online, met each other's families, and become close, but had never officially dated. However, Brandon felt very jealous of the other guys who had been with Bianca and wanted desperately to be with her himself. It appears she went to this event with another man that she had been interested in, and Brandon came with the intention of confronting her. This is evident from Instagram posts he made beforehand while en route to her location. Later that night, when Brandon and Bianca were alone, fueled by jealousy, he took the opportunity to end Bianca's life with a knife. Brandon then posted pictures on Discord and or Instagram of Bianca, and police were notified of the situation. As the police closed in on him, Brandon tried but failed to take his own life, and after being taken to the hospital for his injuries, he was charged with the killing of Oxychan. Brandon initially claimed he was innocent of the charge of second-degree murder during the beginning of the trial, but on February 10th, 2020, he pled guilty with the understanding that he would serve 25 years to life. So there you have the story of Oxychan, a troubled young woman who unfortunately never had a chance to grow up or self-improve. If there's one lesson to be learned from this case, it's to be careful when surrounding yourself with unruly characters. So until next time, thanks for watching.